Departing the island of Sao Vicente, the plan was to take the scenic route up Brazil's longest highway, BR-101, to the historic and incredibly beautiful port of Parachi. Much like California's famed 101, the Brazilian 101 skirts a picturesque and rocky coastline, connecting a number of secluded beaches and idyllic hideaways, left largely unmolested thanks to the major inland highways connecting Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. Taking the indirect coastal route affords countless opportunities to stop and enjoy the scenery over fresh seafood and a cocktail or two. Rising and falling with the topography over forested peninsulas and across sandy, crescent-shaped bays, the highway traverses both Kaidu Su Environmental Protection Area and Seja da Bocaina National Park. Lining the bay of Ilha Grande, this transition zone contains important remnants of the Atlantic forest biome, coastal mangroves, and humid tropical forests spilling directly into the Atlantic Ocean. Making the village of Parachi, originally a Portuguese colonial port founded in 1957, and now a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the ideal spot to hang our helmets for a few days. Parachi, a fishing village of the indigenous Guarana Indians, prior to European contact in the 1500s, was eventually colonized by the Portuguese, who used it as a port deep in the protected waters of Ilha Grande Bay to ship gold to Rio de Janeiro en route to Portugal. Known as the end of the Camino do Ouro, or Gold Trail, it is estimated that between 800 and 850 tons of gold were shipped from this port before the gold trail was rerouted directly to Rio de Janeiro to avoid the increasingly frequent pirate attacks that took place in these waters.
I slept in while Chad toured the streets of historic Parachi, discovering in the process that not only is riding cobblestone not nearly as fun as you might expect, but many of the streets were flooded. Assuming it had something to do with the torrential rain, he was surprised to learn this was in fact seawater and the flooding was by design. Lacking any sort of sewage system or sanitation, the Portuguese constructed the streets of Parachi just below the level of the spring tide, the high water mark typically associated with the full moon. The receding tide would cleanse the streets and wash the trash and sewage that accumulated throughout the month out to sea. Both brilliant and disgusting. So this is salt water from the high tide. And believe it or not, I'm not keen on riding through salt water, so. It was here, taking pictures down at the docks and receiving an education on tidal sanitation that Chad found his inspiration for the day. If it's good enough for raw sewage, it's good enough for us. After a salty day on the water, we spent our last night in town, enjoying the sights and sounds of the city. Crashing Palm Sunday, getting this girl more dessert, and of course, hanging out with these guys. And in case you were wondering, this is their actual music. Before suiting up and heading out in the morning, to take on the Camino do Oro and the Estrada Real, the Portuguese Royal Road, into the highlands of Minas Gerais. Continuing our obsession with Brazil on two wheels.